The Publishing Ministry, Chapter Eight: Training of Workers. Publishing House, a training school. The office was to be an educating training school for the youth. Those connected with the office should have a deep, abiding love for Jesus Christ, and they will have a care for all the souls for whom He has given His precious life. There will be the tenderest sympathy exercised toward the motherless and the fatherless, and these are to be especially the subjects for determined effort, the subject of wise, well-directed labor, approaching them with the tenderness of Christ Jesus. Personal religion will reveal itself in bearing good fruit. Sanctification is not the work of a day, but a lifetime. The human heart becomes a medley of passions, vanities, love of self, love of money, and love of the world. There should be in the heart of every one grace which can bloom in the garden of God. Selfishness will cut out every precious likeness of Christ, will expel humility and self-denial and devotion. Education of apprentices. Much has been presented to me. Regarding the special work which should be done for apprentices by those who occupy positions of responsibility in our publishing houses, the Lord will lead us onward and upward if we are willing to be led. He wants us to reach a higher standard of spirituality than we have reached in the past. Those carrying responsibilities in our publishing houses have under their charge apprentices who will be influenced by their words and actions. Those who have any part to act in the education of these apprentices should reveal Christ in their lives. I have seen for a long time that the apprentices in our publishing houses have not received sufficient attention. In order to provide a practical training in the areas of writing, editorial work, and public relations, a program of on-the-job training has been cooperatively established by the General Conference. It is not enough to see that they work the stated number of hours in the office. Connected with their work, there should be hours for education. Studies should be taken up and lessons given at appointed times. The suggestion which has been made regarding the forming of classes for the education of the youth in the office is an excellent one. Bring pleasantness, encouragement, and hopefulness into this work. The apprentices should be given instruction in bookkeeping. A knowledge of how to keep accounts will be a great help to them personally and a great advantage in their work. A great scattering foreseen. We must do a thorough work in education. The youth in our offices of publication should receive practical instruction in every line of work connected with the printing of books. Then, if the providence of God shall lead them to other countries, they can learn the language and be able to print for the people in that country the truth that God has committed to us, which must go to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. The Lord is sending His angels, preparing the hearts of the people to receive the truth. And if we are only consecrated to His service, we shall be sent forth in the spirit and power of Elijah. From the light given me of God, I know that some should acquire a perfect understanding of every line of work connected with the printing and binding of books, for God will place them in positions where such work will be required of them. Because we are now settled here, we seem to think that we shall never be moved. But there will come a time when there will be a great scattering, a scattering that we do not now dream of. And it will be brought about in unexpected ways. Some of you will be taken away to remote regions, but God will have a work for you there. While you are here, let everyone be teachable. Educate and train every power of the mind, that you may obtain an understanding in every part of the work. Cultivate the voice. Learn to speak so as to make the most favorable impression upon other minds. Office workers should be literature evangelists. The Lord's work has many branches. The ways in which the Lord condescends to employ human agents are numerous. As God's stewards, each man and woman has a work to perform. Each one is given capabilities which qualify him for this work. 
If those in responsible positions in the office put aside all selfishness, if they faithfully weigh the probabilities and possibilities, they will see that if there are any employed in the office to do a work that might better be done outside the office, these should be placed where they can use their ability in other lines of the Lord's work. There is great need of canvassers, and none of us are in this world to please and glorify self. Cheerful Interviews and Examinations Before a worker is admitted to the office, he should be examined in regard to his capabilities and his spiritual condition. This examination should not be conducted in an arbitrary manner, but in the love of Christ, not after the regular order, but after Christ's order. The work done for the spiritual interest of the workers in the office should be done with cheerfulness. It is not to be looked upon as a burden, but as a privilege. Those who do this work are not to wear long faces as though they were going to a funeral. Their countenances should be lighted up with the joy of serving Christ. Help one who has weak points in character. Instruction was given me that Brother P should be separated from his worldly associates, that unless he was placed under altogether different influences, he would be ruined, and that as he was called away from his work in the southern field, without a proper motive, to take up work in the review office, he should return to the work from which he was called. The word given me was, Take this young man as your son. Your mother's heart must adopt him as one who will need your sympathy and watch care. His soul is precious. He may be imbued with my spirit and enabled to accomplish a work of soul-saving. You can be instrumental in helping him. Do not turn from him because he has weak points in his character. Deal liberally with workers. God is rich. He can afford to be liberal. He desires his servants to work in lines that will inspire confidence. Everyone is to be liberally dealt with. Yet the fragments are to be gathered up, that nothing be lost. In dealing with minds, be very careful to reveal Christ. Make your apprentices understand that they are a part of the firm. Say to them, We want you to cooperate with Christ. As you do this, you will work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for God will work in you to will and to do of His good pleasure. Do nothing that will lead the apprentices to feel that they have not been treated right. This feeling corrodes in the mind, and the impression is never lost. May the Lord give us tender hearts, hearts of flesh, not hearts of steel. Remember that as you judge, so you will be judged. To those who show mercy, God will show mercy. Remember that to you has been given the privilege of helping Christ in the person of His saints. When you use this privilege aright, you are giving glory to the Savior. Your work will bring you rich returns.